It is important to understand the difference between the term Jews, Hebrews, and Zionists. The majority of the world's Jewish population are honest, caring, honorable people who practice Judaism, follow religious tradition, and embrace good moral values. The term Hebrew refers to the Hebrew language. It also refers to the Hebrew people who are the ethnic descendants of the original 12 tribes of Israel. The term Zionist refers to political extremists. Zionists believe that the Hebrews are God's chosen race of people and that the Hebrews have a right to the land of the Muslim Palestinians. Why? Because according to the Bible, God said so. These Zionist extremists represent only a small minority of Jews and Hebrews. Christians who support Israel's theft of Palestinian land are called Christian Zionist extremists. Their goal is to help fulfill the prophecies of the Bible story. Countless millions of Americans are reading a series of novels called Left Behind. They're topping bestseller lists all over the country, and they're being made into movies. They chronicle apocalyptic times. The setting is the 21st century, complete with warplanes and TV correspondence. This is Buck Williams reporting live from Israel. I am standing in the middle of an all-out attack. But the plot is ripped from the pages of the Bible, so it all winds up here in Israel, where according to the book of Revelations, the final battle in the history of the future will be fought on this ancient battleground in northern Israel called Armageddon. It will follow seven years of tribulation during which the earth will be shaken by such disasters that previous human history will seem like a day in the country. I made the only decision I ever knew how to make. I did what I thought was right. Fifty years ago, the United States dropped the atomic bomb on Japan. To this day, Americans know very little about how that decision was reached. The idea that the United States committed these and other horrific crimes against humanity and participated in the 911 incineration of thousands of its own citizens is too frightening a thought for many to consider. But even more frightening are the consequences of denial. Did the world wars, revolutions, and big events of human history evolve naturally, or were they calculated and pre-planned? If they were pre-planned, who planned them, and what are they planning for the future of humanity? The answer to this puzzling question can be found within the boundaries of three of the world's most powerful cities. Those three cities belong to no nation and pay no taxes. They are Washington's District of Columbia, which is not part of the city of Washington or of the United States the inner city of London, which is not part of London or England, and Vatican City, which is not part of Rome or Italy. These cities, called city-states, have their own independent flag, their own separate laws, and their own separate identity. Vatican City is in fact a state, the smallest principality in the world. It lies on the banks of the Tiber, completely surrounded by the city of Rome. Its status as a separate state emerged from the Lateran Agreements of February 1929. It has its own newspaper, postal service, radio and television station, its own flag, and a population of about 1,000. The Vatican also has its own army of Swiss guards and it even has its own prison. Gracing the walls of St. Peter's Basilica is the Vatican-approved image of God, an angry bearded man in the sky painted by Michelangelo. Sinners who disobey God's list of thou shalt nots risk incurring his wrath and damnation and burning in Satan's eternal hellfire. 
cruel and violent images of God's tortured son suffering, bleeding, and dying with thorns gouged through his skull and nails pounded through his feet and hands are on display throughout the Vatican. These images serve as reminders that God allowed his son to be tortured and killed to save the souls of human beings who are all born sinners. These explanations and scary images are especially difficult for children to comprehend. The Vatican rules over approximately 2 billion of the world's 6.1 billion people. The colossal wealth of the Vatican includes enormous investments with the Rothschilds in Britain, France and the USA and with giant oil and weapons corporations like Shell and General Electric. The Vatican solid gold bullion worth billions is stored with the Rothschild controlled Bank of England and the US Federal Reserve Bank. The Catholic Church is the biggest financial power, wealth accumulator, and property owner in existence, possessing more material wealth than any bank, corporation, giant trust, or government anywhere on the globe. The Pope, who is the visible ruler of this colossal global wealth, is one of the richest men on earth. While two-thirds of the world earns less than two dollars a day, and one-fifth of the world is underfed or starving to death, the Vatican hoards the world's wealth, profits from it on the stock market, and at the same time preaches about giving. How did the Pope and Vatican accumulate all that wealth over the millennium? One method was to put a price tag on sin. Many bishops and popes actively marketed guilt, sin, and fear for profit by selling indulgences. Worshippers were encouraged to prepay for sins they hadn't yet committed and get pardoned ahead of time. Those who didn't pay up risked eternal damnation in Satan's oven. Pope Leo X rebuilt St. Peter's Basilica, selling tickets out of hell and tickets to heaven. During the Dark Ages, the Catholic Church not only hoarded the wealth they collected from the poor, but hoarded knowledge. They kept the masses ignorant and in the dark, by denying them a basic education. More than 60,000 armed Christians were on their way to reclaim Jerusalem from the infidel. 